Welcome everybody to week 33 asynchronous work for block day two. How does solving a linear system in two variables compare to solving an equation in one variable? Well, in either case, we are going to be solving for a variable, isolating for the variable. So for example, if I add 5x plus 2 is equal to 10, I want to do my subtraction and my division properties of equality in order to isolate for the variable. The variable in this case would be x. So now I'm using my division property of equality. I'm going to get x is equal to 8 divided by 5. So we isolate for the variable. Well, if we add like 5x plus 2y, where we, whoop, go back, plus 2y is equal to 10, this is standard form. Most of the time, we're going to want to isolate for y. So we're going to convert it into slope-intercept form. And if we do that, we're going to get 2y is equal to negative 5x plus 10. And then we divide by 2 on both sides. And we get y is equal to negative 5 halves x plus 10 divided by 2 is 5. Now, in this case, if we had another... We had another formula, we'd be able to substitute our value for y right here into the other equation and then solve for x. So let's answer our question. In both cases, we must isolate for the variable using properties, algebraic properties, of equality. Now, it might be that we're using the distributive property sometimes, and that's not equality, but, you know. Now, if we have a system where we have two equations, or a system of equations, after isolating, We will need to solve for the second variable as well. For both the equation, let's zoom back and go down. For both the equation in one variable and a system of Linear equations, there can be to be one solution, an infinite number of solutions, or no solutions. Now that looks like the following. Um, so if you had one unique solution. Let's do black. If you had one unique solution, that looks like this. They can have, they could have the same y-intercept, but their slopes are going to be different. They don't have to have the same y-intercept. So this is one solution. They hit here. We could have no solution in which they're parallel and they cannot have the same y-intercept. Or they could be infinite solutions. But in this case, that's where you have both lines on top of each other. They're the same line. Now, systems that have one or many solutions, they're going to be called consistent systems. These are the consistent solutions right here. Now, if it's an inconsistent solution, it's going to be this right here, the two parallel lines right here where there's no solution. They will never touch. All right, let's go on. So let's go out this chart. Y so descriptions of the y-intercepts. We have where the y-intercepts can be the same or different. Y-intercepts are the same or the y-intercepts are different. Well, if it's y-intercepts are different and it's inconsistent, 
then we know the number of solutions will be zero. So we can literally just go right here and put zero solutions. And the graph will be parallel. We know that it is parallel. Right, parallel lines. Now, if the y-intercepts have to be the same and it's consistent, well then that is going to be the same, that's where it's the same line. So if they hit at two, y equals two, well then they have to be right there. Oh, I don't know why I drew that there. So on this, this would be infinitely many solutions. Let me erase that. I should, oh, let me see if I can pick that up and move it. I don't know if I can. Let's see if I can. Come on. Hand tool? Let's use my hand tool. No. I'll select annotations. There we go. There we go. Ha, great. All right, let's go back. Get that out of there. Get out of there. All right, next up. Now let's bring this over here for just for the heck of it. All right, so now we have how many solutions this? This would be infinitely many. Solutions. So this looks like it looks like one line. Now for the next one, number of solutions, this is going to be the one solution. I mean, it could have, the solution could be at the, whoop, could be at the y-intercept right here, but it doesn't have to be. It could be off it. And so then if it looks like this, then it would be different. So two lines touching. One. So in each of these cases, there's some clear defined uh, parameters, like they look like a certain way. If they have, if their y-intercepts are the same, it's, a, it's going to be a consistent system. Now, it could be one solution or many solutions. Let's answer this, this last part. Explain why the x and y coordinates of the points where the graphs of the systems intersects are solutions. Well. Everything, everything on this black line right here is a, you know, makes this graph true. All right. Everything on this red line right here makes the red graph true. So this green part, I'm just going to draw it here. This green part is the intersection. It's where the red and the black line meet. Everything for both lines are true here. So the x, so let's, let's create this, uh, get out of here. Ooh, ooh. No, I want to, I want to move you out of there. Get out of there. There you go. Fix box. All right, here we go. So the x and y values of the point intersection of the two graphs makes both equations true. And that's the idea of a system, a solution to a system of equation. It's where all the equations in the system are true at this point. All right, thanks guys. I'll see you guys on week 34. Bye.